Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano and I'm back with another Galaxy's Edge item review. This is going to be one of the new creatures from Bina's Creature Stall. It's the Dianoga. Now we may know the Dianoga from Star Wars A New Hope. Could be worse. It's worse. Where they're in the trash compactor and the little the Luke, you know, feels it and it comes and takes him under for a little bit. This is the Dianoga. Now, also, if you've been to Galaxy's Edge, you know the Dianoga from the water fountain. Now, if you use your datapad app and you do the little puzzle for the water fountain, supposedly that's how you get him to come out. Same with the Millennium Falcon jets when you do the little puzzle to hack the Millennium Falcon that shoots the little jet thrusters out. So it's kind of one of those neat interactive ways you can play in the land. But they recently made a toy version of it, one of the creatures from the creature stall. Now, this one, you may notice, is just a bit more weathered and fancy looking than the ones you'll find in the creature stall. That's because I like to customize everything in my life. I really do. I like to customize. Like, I don't like to have the same stuff that everybody else has. <laughs> I'll be honest. I like really like it when stuff's unique, when it's mine, when no one else has the same thing. So I weathered it. I took it and I put some... Actually, here, take a look. Right here, this is what it looked like before. This is the color that it looked like before. You can see it's a clear case. It was just clear. Had a nice kind of brownish bronze kind of color, gold color top to it. And all the metal part was that same color. So the first thing that I did was I actually got some masking tape. And I masked off all the clear areas. And I used my X-Acto knife to be really, really, really precise along all the edges. That way, when I did my airbrush, I wouldn't you know, have any splotches that were missing. So it took patience laying down each piece of tape all the way around and really taking those edges out. Once that was done, I got my airbrush and I used some of this. This is uh, the brand I use, Createx Airbrush Colors. Yeah, yeah, no, deep red. I know I didn't go blue like I normally do, but I went with the deep red color. And I, I think it came out really good. Afterwards, I sealed it with a, um, a matte top coat. You can kind of see there's the brand I use. Airbrush Colors Matte Top Coat. I got this off Amazon, so I'll put a link down below uh, for some of that. And once that was done, then I got a little bit of alcohol ink. I don't know if I got a recording of that or not, but I did put some alcohol ink. Take it out. You guys can maybe see it a little bit better. Here's the creature, just so you can see. We'll get into the, the details of the creature here in just a second. Um, looks really cool. Feels really cool. But just a second. For now, we're going to focus on this outside, outside case. Again, you can see that's the inside normal color. Oh, hey, there's a little plastic thing in there. Interesting. <laughs> but that's the normal color inside, that kind of goldish, brownish color. And then this new red, there it is too. Also, there's some stuff on the bottom you guys might be interested in seeing. Uh, let me kind of read what the instructions are real quick. The first one is to hold the handle and to turn in order to open it, which you just saw me do. Uh, then it goes into some details on how to move the tentacle up and down to move the head up and down, and then move left and right to make the head move left and right. Uh, this is $39.99 is what this normally costs. $39.99. So it is not cheap, but that's also kind of on par with the rest of the creatures from the creature stall. Okay, so either way, what I did is I got a little bit of uh, green alcohol ink, and I kind of rubbed it all along using a little cotton dauber. I rubbed it all along the edges. Not, not so much the center, but mostly the edges. Uh, there's some spotches here in the center where you don't see as much. And I did the same with this one. You can see it's a it's around the edges, but it's not in the center. So because I felt like if the water, this is something that that I is a philosophy I have with art all the time. Whenever I'm creating something, is it's not so much about the talent of your hand, as much as the thought process and the why you put paint where you put it. Um, and I think that trumps artistic ability any day of the week. So really, if you think about it, so what I did as I was thinking about it is I figured this thing would be full of water, right? But there would be an air bubble up top, so the top wouldn't have the same grime as the sides. And so the sides, and especially if this is where you lift the lid, that's why I put all my drips coming down the side right here. Uh, there's a little bit I put on the top just because I figured it would get messy from handling. But I left this part mostly clear, and then I just kind of put green in the edges probably from me splashing around. And then I really just went heavy on some of the silver. You can see a lot of the chipped edges. I just took some uh, different color paint. I got some raw sienna. Raw sienna is one that I use. And then I use just Liquitex Basic Silver. Uh, those are like my go-to weathering paints. And of course, a little bit of black acrylic paint. You don't have to use these brands. You can use any black acrylic paint. That's Mars Black. 
um, just a tiny little bit of that into a cup of water to make a black wash. And I really just get my brush and basically make dirty water. And I brush that dirty water all over everything. And I literally would just apply it to the corners and let it drip. And I did the same thing with the brown to really get a lot of those markings on there. Okay, so now that you've seen how I kind of customized it, let's take a look at the creature itself. Oh, this creature is so cool looking. You can tell, see how, how floppy it is? I was like, bleh. <laughs> uh, it's gummy. It's like gooey, gooey feeling all the way around. Even on the neck up here, it's kind of gooey. The eyeball's hard. You can hear it. The eyeball's hard. The eyelids are hard. And on the bottom down here where the battery compartment is, uh, this section is hard as well. But all the rest of the, you can see the seam where it goes from being hard to this rubbery plastic. You can see all its tentacles and how cool it is. He's so squishy feeling too. Um, I do wonder how that holds up in the long run. I imagine a toy like this 20 years from now, um, it's going to be more likely to rip. This kind of material deteriorates over time. You'll find like older toys with rubbery stuff. And just age will get it to be more brittle. And I imagine pulling this and it would snap off. Not anytime soon, but I'm saying if you want to collect it for a billion years from now, give it to, like I do. I mean, I literally just opened a Micro Machine set from 1998. You know, so that, that is a real, like, thing to think about. If I were to open this some 20, 22 years from now, 23 years from now, would it still hold up when I opened it or would it fall apart and be brittle? I have a feeling it might be a little bit brittle. Um, but let's let's turn it on. It's still really cool, though. And so this back tentacle, the one directly behind the head, this one right here, if you... it's This is the puppet mechanism. So I can pull it down and it, hand, it goes down. Tilt it up, and the head goes up. Also, I can turn it. And when you turn it side to side is when it blinks. Let me cover my face so you guys can see it better. And now he should be making noise. Oh, there we go. I was like, where's the noise at? He should be making plenty of noise. But I like it. I like the, the puppet. Like, you can be very subtle about it. It's really cool. It doesn't do a whole lot. But it is really neat. Now, one problem I usually have is if I don't turn it off and I put him back in his cage, it'll get stuck making noise sometimes. Yeah, I didn't even have to move much. Okay, okay, I hear you. So, he does fit in there pretty well. You can see. Uh, the tentacles do kind of come up a little bit. But then you just take your lid, which has a handle, and there are arrows that let you line it up. Um, I just don't. I painted over them. I didn't want the arrows on there. Okay, okay. See, now you hear him? Now he's stuck doing the same noise over and over. Until I let him out. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. So I'm going to let him out, and I turn him off before I put him in, just for that reason. Uh, but that is something that happens if you leave it on. Just so you all know. Guys, I think this is a really cool creature. Um, I don't want to say the F word and say favorite because I, I generally try to stay away from picking favorites because that changes for me all the time. Uh, just on a constant basis, something new is going to be my favorite. But I really, really, really like this, like this creature a lot. I like it a lot, a lot. I don't know. I, I just really like this creature a lot. I think it's really cool. The fact that I could customize this one versus some of the other creatures at the creature stall. And they've got a new one too. There's a new lava meerkat, which I don't have yet. Uh, currently, I think until June 15th, they aren't allowing locals into the park, even though I went once. Shh. For it was May the 4th, and it was a gifted ticket, okay? I couldn't not go, even though I live in Nevada. Um, they didn't check my ID, so I got in fine. Either way, <laughs> that's beside the point. I will not be able to return until mid-June as an out-of-state traveler who is fully vaccinated. So, I don't have the Lava Meerkat. I don't like paying smuggler prices for things I don't really need in my life. So I don't have that one, and I have, don't have a review for it yet, but here's a photo of it. You can take a look. Now, again, this is one of the ones that just isn't talked about, which is why I wanted to bring it up. I think it's super cool. I like it a lot. The fact that I can customize it is probably the only thing I can really, truly customize. That's a lie. I, the Nibre, I customized those and painted them so they could go on Rongo. So never mind. Second creature that I've customized. I've seen some people do some cool stuff with the uh, Kowaki and Lizard Monkeys. So... You can customize those too and make them your own, which this guy's probably do. Either way, what do you guys think? Good? Bad? What do you think? Okay. 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 
But I need a final verdict. Is it going to be sad? Is it going to be rad? What is this thing? Hmm? Hmm? Hey! Yeah! Okay. No, no, no. I agree. I think this thing's rad. I would rate this rad. Guys, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And then rate the video. Is it rad? Is it sad? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave it down there. Thank you guys for being part of the sad baby squad. You're subscribed. You've got the notifications turned on. You're just a decent person. You're basically just not a move milker. You're one of those people who, instead of being a move milker, they're being the spark. See ya.